Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our mini lecture number two on anxiety and CRF. So we are talking about corticotropin releasing factor this time and how it relates to anxiety and impulsivity. I'm sure you all remember perfectly our discussion of CRF uh, from all the way back to our chemical signaling and hormonal transmission unit, but if you don't, uh, feel free to go back and refresh yourself on that, but we'll go over it briefly here. Uh, CRF is released from the hypothalamus in response to stress as part of the HPA axis. So the hypothalamus will release CRF into the anterior pituitary, which will then really re release adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, which will make contact with the adrenal cortex, which will cause the release of glucocorticoids, as well as uh, adrenaline and noradrenaline, or epinephrine and norepinephrine, which we will talk about later on. Glucocorticoids do a number of things. Among them, they induce physiological changes that help us to adapt to a given challenge. And again, we've talked about all this before, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time rehashing it here. Um, you can go back and, and refresh yourself on all that stuff if you have uh, gotten a little rusty on it. But we know that cortisol acts as a negative feedback system and uh, on the HP axis and will reduce its own levels. So high levels of cortisol will act as a negative feedback and reduce the amount of cortisol being released. Right, cortisol being one of those glucocorticoids that we're talking about. In addition to its wide-reaching sort of hormonal effects in the bloodstream, CRF also acts as a neurotransmitter in many areas associated with the anxiety in the brain. So it acts as a neurotransmitter centrally, as well as its peripheral effects that we've already discussed to uh, some degree. So CRF causes increased anxiety across multiple tests. So administering CRF into the brain will cause increased anxiety readouts and things like the elevated plus maze, tests of social conflict, or an open field test similar to what uh, we did in class. So stressful stimuli can cause CRF release in the amygdala, which shouldn't be surprising. And uh, many behavioral effects uh, are prevented with a CRF antagonist pre-treatment, right? So lots of these stress or anxiety producing uh, behaviors that we can do to model stress, the, the Increase in stressed behavior can be prevented by pretreating with a CRF antagonist, right, to block the effects of CRF signaling centrally. We also know that uh, CRF projections from the amygdala to the locus ceruleus, or the LC, as we will abbreviate it going forward, activate adrenergic component to the stress response. So this is distinct from the uh, CRF effect on adrenergic signaling that we're seeing in the periphery. We're talking specifically here about activation of the locus ceruleus, which is that nucleus that is responsible for producing must, much of the um, norepinephrine in the uh, central nervous system. So CRF projections uh, from the amygdala to the locus ceruleus, the LC, are uh, important for activation of this adrenergic component of the stress response. And uh, we know that this site is specifically important because infusion of CRF directly into the LC will produce anxiety. Okay, that is our brief little mini lecture on CRF and stress and uh, impulsivity. See you next time.